All right, guys, welcome back to Skeptics. This is episode 10, and we are still on Aliens. So welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Tom and Josh, how are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. Tommy? I'm <clears throat> um, doing pretty good, recovering from Vegas. I mean, I don't remember anything. It was it was a blur. I, I yeah. think I might have been probed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, you were. We paid extra, but... <laughs> I could probably remind you. I, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take like some highlights, so maybe we can like share it on the podcast. And literally, all I got was like a 30 second video of me and Tom like laying in bed watching TV. <laughs> that was Vegas. <laughs> yeah. I remember getting real excited on the high roller, thinking I saw like something out there because there was like mm. helicopters everywhere. But I saw some, like this like what I thought was something that what didn't have lights on, and I was like, what Ooh. is that? And I was like real excited about it. And I could see it kind of moving. And then all of a sudden, my eyes kind of focused a little bit better. And it was just a smudge on the window <laughs> that, that, I, that I hadn't focused in on. And I was like, Dang. that is funny. That thing yeah, was I, a little, uh, it was more just like scratched, smudgy plastic, like plexiglass, like the the casing. It was uh, That was a little less um, satisfying than I thought it'd be. I just imagined looking out of clean windows at the, like, beautiful skyline oh, yeah. or something but so you just, yeah i mean you, you imagine with uh, drunk people 24 hours a day <laughs> right. yeah <laughs> true that <clears throat> yeah. yeah i saw i saw like a, a helicopter flying by it was like hey. yeah you know dude helicopters are always just zipping across vegas like all day long like i didn't i don't know what that's about well, they do lots of tours oh. There's hel- the, yeah when we were looking up stuff to do it was, there was like 15 companies that are doing helicopter tours of the of gotcha. the strip. yeah hmm, that's cool yeah so um josh's bachelor party was over the last weekend and uh he's getting married in a little over a month now so congrats josh yep putting the ring you, on that uh that crazy person talking about ghosts from a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> that that didn't like yeah. like put a nail in it <laughs> yeah i thought i'd save the rest of you just <laughs> <laughs> taking her out of the wild so. <laughs> oh, I, love uh, it. I came away with vegas um uh just very skeptical about um, cole's ability to play blackjack properly that's one thing <laughs> well i don't play blackjack properly <laughs> yeah. i just okay. play blackjack okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it was still fun i i made the i made the point like cole made some decisions that like regular blackjack players wouldn't be into but as a regular blackjack player cole and i both walked away as losers so i mean (laughs) so it's hard to it's hard to like not like dog cole for his his uh blackjack skills yeah if any listeners were out there remote viewing them both being losers regardless of play um you were right (laughs) Dude, we I we would have probably been so hard to sit at that blackjack table with because because of our like little squabbling that was happening. And Kendall, yeah. you know, lets a little bit loose when he's he's got some alcohol like, in him. That guy probably thought I was such an idiot. There there was a guy at a table with us that had like, I don't know, two thousand dollars and was kind of being a big shot and was like, You wanna see something real dumb? And oh, yeah. doubled down with like Two or three thousand dollars on one hand, and then right after that, I was like, "You want to see something real smart with like my fifteen dollars out there?" And double down with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I loved it. Oh, I, I, those those guys, those two that were at the end of the table, they were just like they were cool because they weren't the kind of like, I mean, they weren't like high rollers, high rollers, but they weren't the kind of high rollers that um, that are douchey. You know what I mean? Or that are whiny, yeah, or that are just drunk, or they were they were just cool and just fun. Yeah, those they're not the type cool. of they're not the type of high rollers that that borrowed um, five thousand dollars from a bookie to um, play yeah. t- that day, and then when right. they lose, they're just ah! right, right. No, they're they're just they're wasting their own probably like tech bro money. Right, yeah. totally. Yeah, those guys were cool. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, so we're yeah back on the train talking about aliens and we got reprimanded in the youtube comments by tom's wife for not talking about the mexican congress ufo mummies that were all over the news a few months ago and it's a good point like we spent a lot of time going i don't know what do you think about aliens 
Yeah. But like we didn't like talk about actual stuff. So the presentation that was made in Mexico's Congress back in like, I don't know, what was it? September something, October. Um, this guy, <clears throat> I just pulled this up on Wikipedia because I didn't previously have any information on the guy or the situation. I was told by someone that he's the same guy that came up with the Atacama skeleton, which was something that was, you know, shown to be a malformed child that was probably born very prematurely and lived for a couple of years. Um, and he's over here promoting it like, oh, this was a, an alien burial in Peru. Um, so he's, he's kind of a, uh, pt barnum type where he'll he'll kind of take anything and, and run with it for publicity's sake this guy's name is jaime malsan uh so he brought the atacama skeleton forward um he according to wikipedia has a long list of other things he's brought forward and been like look these are aliens and in each case they have been knocked down by any kind of analysis like any looking closely reveals that like it's you know it's a mummified person or it's something made out of bones and paper mache or like that's kind of he is a repeat offender of this kind of thing now it's not clear whether he goes and makes these things and makes big presentations of them or if he just takes anything that anyone brings his way and doesn't vet it so he's he's a bit of a zealot um and i'll just read a a little section from from wikipedia on that that one from uh from the mexico congress from last year he unveiled two allegedly non-human beings to mexico's congress during their public hearings on ufos um he says that they were mummified corpses found in a diatom mine in cusco um that they were believed to be more than a thousand years old and then he put forward the following claims about analyses that were done on them by the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He says that the university came to the conclusion that the corpses were not part of our terrestrial evolution, that almost a third of their DNA is of unknown origin. Um, oh, I guess that's all that he said that they claimed. <laughs> but someone from the university who, I guess they analyzed these in September 2017, and they put out a statement at that time, they, they, in response, basically just republished that same statement. And they said, we did not tell him any of that. Um, they said <laughs> that, uh, that they did not make any conclusion as to the origins of the sample and the sample that was sent to them. So they, they get a little, you know, probably a little square of it that was cut off. Um, the sample that was sent to them was sent for carbon 14 testing, which is just carbon dating. Um, and that they performed no other kind of test on it. So they carbon dated the thing. Um, I don't know what they've said. I don't, so his claim that it's believed to be more than a thousand years old. I don't know if that comes from their carbon dating or if that's also something he inflated, but they did no analyses to try to determine like, the origin, the genetic makeup, like all of that was hooey. Like they literally carbon dated a, a thing that was sent to them. And for all they know, it wasn't even from the mummy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that guy's full of crap. Oh. Um, I, I'd really like to believe that he just like has found all of these things and is like, they just keep discounting. I'm like, come on. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they're all like completely legit. And he's just like he just so frustrated. He's like, I'm not making this up. <laughs> like, when are they going to realize I'm just finding these things? Oh, but that would be I know hilarious. That, I, I know that that's not the case. Yeah, yeah they're, like, they're just feeding everything that they want to release. Like, oh man, they found another thing. Okay, let's get it over to this guy. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> they just make sure they get it to that guy so that they can just discredit him. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah disinformation um, now like bob it, lazar like they they just like let's make sure bob lazar and jerry corbell release it and then 
Dude, that's that's an interesting thing because like I feel like literally like in the last month there's been a little bit of turn of opinion about Jeremy Corbell. Like he was like a rock star a couple months ago and like right now people are being like is <laughs> there's there are two conversations happening. Is Jeremy Corbell a disinformation agent and is Jeremy Corbell like a charlatan? Does he like make stuff up? Anyway, I think he's, you know, he's whatever. He's a guy who's easily excited, but he's probably not full of crap. I think the things he's saying are are true. I feel like it's just so much. Like, I feel like it's like every other week there's something new, and I feel like that's what they... Yeah. I feel like it's almost on purpose where they're flooding us with so much stuff, mm. and they've given it to the right people to make it feel like like it is like ah everyone's talking about that so that people don't get excited about it and they they've like watered it down to the point yeah. where oh no that you know all of those weirdos are talking about it you know like us three and so right, right. It, it's not like this big you know release like i would want like i, right. I want to see the president on uh, you know everyone shut down Every you know, everyone in schools, every like mm-hmm. everything shut down and turn on your TVs because they're acknowledging it. They're not going to give us that moment. They're just going to water right. us down nightly with these little fuzzy clips of stuff mm-hmm. to the point where nobody's asking questions or talking about it. Yeah. So that that tactic is like that's kind of you could say disinformation. They're that really they're using either true and or false stuff to get us disinterested in it. Um, and that might be, I think it's equally likely that they are trying to, uh, get us accustomed to it so that they can, cause like the dam's going to break someday. And I think they've just read the writing on the wall and they're like, like, obviously this is going to, the, the dissonance between like mainstream, like, and like perception, you know, the dissonance between that and the reality of, let's say, the state of the art of technology and uh, aerospatial travel and stuff like that. The dissonance is growing so wide that like eventually like for it to break would, would be like seriously traumatic, like something that might do what they worry about, like upend the world. But it's like, since it's going to happen at some point, no matter what, I think they have finally acknowledged that internally and been like, okay, what can we do so as to get out in front of enough of it that they don't like hang us in the public square when it comes to light? So I think they're they're drip feeding us right now so that, yeah, like it'll be normalized a little bit and, and we'll be ready for it when they're like, okay, full acknowledgement. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I'm just not as, I don't know that it's for our benefit as much yeah, as yeah. it's you know like i don't feel like they're you know and my, with my mom teaching a special education it like they refer to that as like pre-stressing like hey this is gonna mm-hmm. happen later you know okay that what that's kind of like what you're referring to is yeah, like they're pre-stressing yeah. us is like this is gonna be, happen later <clears> you know <throat> um mm-hmm. I'll, I'll get ready you know yeah. like here's a little taste of it um i don't know that that's what our government's doing as much as like Hey, you know, we're doing all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. We don't want you guys to pay attention to what we're doing over here that's going to benefit us or whatever. Yeah. We don't yep. want you, you idiots asking us questions. I definitely see that. Um, real quick, the Mexico Congress thing does get a little bit more interesting. Um. So apparently during a second presentation in November before the Mexican Congress, uh, Malsan brought a couple of witnesses and uh, they were doctors. One of them is an anthropologist named Roger Zuniga. It looks like this guy like has a name, you know, like he's someone that you could probably check on the reputation of. Um, And let's see, these doctors testified that... that the these uh specimens were not related to any life on earth and then the anthropologist guy he said there was absolutely no human intervention in the physical and biological formation of these beings and then there's a caveat that the 
the author of this Wikipedia section wrote. They said, however, none of the cited doctors or, Z or Zuniga suggested that the remains represented those of extraterrestrials. So it sounds like some doctors were like, um, okay, so, and maybe it was as simple as they like looked at the anatomy and they were like, yeah, that's not related to, to anything. Or maybe they were legit doctors and they like, maybe they tested the DNA or something. I don't know. But I, what I do remember from briefly watching, um, the coverage of the presentation at, at the time, I do remember them showing CT scan imagery of the bodies. And some of the things that were interesting were that like, it seems to be made of actual bone. So whether it was a doll constructed of bones as, um, uh, Peruvian officials are claiming right now, or whether it was like, you know, the remnants of a corpse, you know, like, let's say it was a person and the majority of the parts were there. Like, let's say it was a partially malformed person. Um, people do weird things with dead bodies. And if this was kind of turned into some like a shrine or something and they like augmented it or maybe repaired it as it decayed, like that could lead to like the weird, like really weird bone structure. Like it's rib cage is like a perfect cylinder going all the way to the hip, just like bone, 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 bone. Some of those oddities could be explained by like repairing a dead body of someone or something that was venerated because they were strange. That would also include why there were like eggs in the abdomen. You know, it's like this could just be a preservation attempt and it really could be old or the whole thing could have been made a few months ago from animal bones and paper mache. It's just like, it's not very easy to know given what few things have been <clears throat> said by supposed experts. Um, it's kind of eye opening that, that Mexico would just hold a, like, I don't want, is it, it was in Congress, right? So yeah. like a congressional thing. Totally. Um, does that, does that like in any way, like discount your beliefs in like chupacabras and stuff? Because like if, <laughs> if, if, if they were legit, like why wouldn't, why aren't they bringing these carcasses into Congress and figuring it out? You know, <laughs> good question. I have no idea what to think about chupacabras these days, <laughs> but uh, I think it has they been are like 15 years since we talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> they're much less likely to be a, a real issue than aliens so so cole i know you watched that documentary with me um yeah that was in it was in peru right or it was in brazil brazil um do you remember the name of that documentary moment of contact okay moment of contact whole thing was about how there was uh a, a ufo that was spotted and then it was different accounts of this moment of contact right so ufo was spotted crashed um different people's accounts of what happened from spotting it to it crashing to people that had interactions with um gray men to um <clears throat> the uh military coming in uh getting them um what happened to the military that you know had contact with them getting sick um all the way to u.s military coming in taking the you know that so it kind of seems like our military is very much invested in rounding it all up taking it totally um, so it kind of seems like if there was actual alien bodies would they make it to Mexican Congress mm. in like a little dirty right, right. box? You know what I mean? That's so, a good point. It, so it's kind of uh, not not to put like too much faith in our, but like it almost seems kind of like a sideshow. Not not to say, yeah. you know, but like to be too um, skeptical. But like, just it kind of feels like we're bullies and we might have just like if totally. that was actually like an alien body that was there we uh, might have been like hey uh heard you have one yeah um we're gonna go ahead and take that now totally so. totally and that's that's the thing is like i think that they have historically not only thrown around their weight been like you want to give this to us but i think they've also 
you know, thrown around money and like they've, they have like sweethearted like people into giving them stuff and they've probably pressed people into giving them stuff. But yeah, I think they've there. I mean, there's a story of them, uh, working with the South African army, I think, uh, because of, a an, a, a saucer crash in 1989 in the Kalahari desert that, you know, there were two, two beings that supposedly survived the crash and the U S military comes knocking and they're like, Hey, can we have that? And they like worked out a deal and took it back to Wright Patterson. Um, so that's and, where it's like, I imagine a phone call was made to this guy about yeah. or about this guy. And they're like, Oh wait, that no, that's, that's paper yeah. mache. And we can leave jelly it. Beans <laughs> <from you>. like, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, he can go ahead and dig that into the Mexican Congress. That's going to be yep. fun. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, stay away from that. If that thing gets anywhere near water, it's going to go ahead and melt. And that's going to be just, <laughs> that's going to be just okay. Yeah. Honestly, someone like wanting that whole presentation to happen does make a lot of sense. Like, especially with the timing. It's like, oh, that's a nice little distraction. <laughs> yeah. Keep, go ahead and keep your coffee away from that one. But. Yeah. Uh, also like in terms of recovery and like trading or whatever, or acquiring from other countries, there was a story that I, th I think if I remember correctly, it predates Roswell of, uh, one landing in Italy or crash landing in Italy and like the Vatican, like taking ownership of it and the U S government working with the Vatican to acquire that. And like in the thirties or maybe the early forties or something, but there's like no shortage of these stories. Um, it's it's very interesting, man, because I definitely think some of them are true. Yeah, I yeah, it's all it's so frustrating, just to not. I just feel like I'll never know. You know, I'll never yeah. know the absolute truth, right? Unless someday I just don't care. And then, you know, when you were telling your story about uh, that specific area, just being like, man, I wonder if I could just like camouflage and just like if if I was somehow able to take like a lot of water and food and camouflage and just slowly crawl, <laughs> on, you know, and just being just as tiny as possible and and make my way into a place if i was ever able to actually experience something myself yeah yeah um, i don't know yeah man that's the only way i'd ever like actually know you yeah know? you can risk it all yeah two eyes and risk it all but end <laughs> up in a cell somewhere and totally forgotten about yep it's funny you brought up the vatican because i feel like we could probably do a two or three part thing on totally whatever's going on there Speaking of the Vatican, check out Tommy in the chat. Yeah, I didn't think I, didn't think I should say it. <laughs> That's a You're good call. Not. Yeah, man, the Vatican definitely is is something worth um, making making some episodes about. That's that's some good stuff. So, other other uh, like you know quote unquote real life scenarios um, that we mentioned wanting to talk about were the the. 2000 what 2017 or whatever pentagon released videos of ufos the go fast the gimbal and the tic tac do we want to just do a watch through and talk about them or or what do you want to do yeah i think that would be cool okay yeah i think so this video is just all three of them back to back so that's supposed to be a tic tac yeah Okay. Okay, gimbal. Okay, never mind. That's not on us, though, is it? It's not it is on us, dude. Well, the first like, Look at that thing. It's rotated. And this is go fast. Target? No, I took an auto track. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Okay. So what are your thoughts on what you saw in each of those? And or so, like what do you know about them? Um, Tom, I should clarify here, this isn't like video 
um of these uh, cole you could probably speak more on that form but like to your first comment of it being like a mosquito on the on the lens or something this isn't most of these aren't picked up or i don't know if any of them are picked up with just like a video camera they're picked up with like instruments that are um like i don't know cole maybe you can right. add more think, information i think each of these was infrared imaging so the the like the jets or whatever else these um, infrared cameras were mounted on. They have, you know, like locking mechanisms and everything, like targeting mechanisms. So anyway, yeah, it's what we're seeing is uh, the heat signatures um, of those bodies more so than just like the actual physical outline of them. So when the go fast switch from black to white, what was that? So you can toggle um, black as hot or white as hot. So you're just like inverting the image oh. because sometimes the contrast is easier to see with one over the other. So it's just toggling that. Yeah. And, and we're just assuming that that pretty much like assuming that's a real alien ship or yeah, alien ship. We're just assuming that that every single one is not here to destroy us like you know, like there was a jet or whatever flying alongside it, and it was just like, yeah, whatever. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, well, that that's an interesting thing because that tends to be the behavior. Like from almost every report out there, it's like these things, uh, they're interested, like they're watching, but they're not concerned with us. There, there have been a couple of instances like supposedly a Russian fighter jet got shot down by one as it – as the jet was being aggressive toward it but those are like very rare reports usually it's like they're just doing their thing and they know we're not a threat to it so they're they kind of don't bother with us that's typically how it goes so like one of the things that i i forget who it was if it was like commander fravor or who, who it was but um i saw on the joe rogan podcast uh with one of his guests is the the air force pilots that are seeing these things because what they do is they go out and they run like practice runs right like they have like daily missions out where they're going to practice maneuvers mm -hmm. or um there's trainers that are taking the guys out and they're they're practicing maneuvers out there they're picking picking up ufos daily mm -hmm. so that they know that they're over there but to go out and practice these maneuvers that's costing you know tons of money to go do that so it's not within you know their daily budget to go investigate what's over there they know something's over there because they can pick it up on their instruments but they know like hey that's not within what what we're supposed to be doing to go over there we already have yeah. a plan of what we're supposed to do so and then the thing is is a lot of these what what they're seeing um as they go by on their way out to go do what they're supposed to do hmm is that they are doing very specific movements every single time. So they're hitting a specific coordinate, almost like a drone is every single time. So, it, and as long as like Cole said, they're not like going to investigate and it's not throwing it off that pattern and they're hitting those same coordinates every single time. I forgot about that. The, uh, yeah, like Fravor said that what the Tic Tac did was like after they first encountered it like it then like where it zoomed off to was essentially like their next like like uh their next location mm -hmm. they were heading to like it like beat them there or something like it knew what was up and though and the amount of time that it takes it to get there is like an insane speed and then it stops on a dime yeah so it, it's it's well like the the speed that it's traveling at is outside of what our normal c capabilities are like we have stuff that can go that fast but then to stop that fast is not what we're capable of doing and then to get up to the speed to do that is not what we're capable of doing that fast yeah so it's like it, it's it's the way that it's moving around is not what we're aware of uh, a vehicle being able to do and then the other thing that's interesting about that second video the gimbal video is the way that it rotates also lines up with what bob lazar described because i don't know how much you know about bob lazar tom but bob lazar 
Huh? I watched one documentary on him. So nice. Okay. So you know he he claims to have worked at um the area uh pulled in for <laughs> pull, pull, pulled in for um you know his his physics knowledge and everything um to reverse engineer a vehicle that they had there, right? Um for the propulsion system side of it. So <clears throat> he um described the the way that the vehicle worked was that it it would go up like this and then tilt forward and then be propelled in that direction right that's how he described that vehicle well in this video that's exactly what this that thing is doing is it's situated like that tilts that way and then goes off so it lines up with exactly what bob lazar has been saying since I don't know. Well, I don't know when he was saying it, but he's had the same story for 30 years. Yeah. So that's something that's interesting, which is also totally. another interesting thing is Bob Lazar's kept the same story since day one. And every so often something that he has claimed to have, you know, seen or said since then comes true. So Mm -hmm. one of the other things that he said way back then that nobody would ever heard of and they completely discredited was this um, system for getting into classified areas or, you know, security system was this this place where you put your hand, you know, that was like a hand scanner that scanned the length of the bones in your hand. Everyone said, well, we've never seen that. That's not real thing. Um, Well, now. The, that is real technology that they used to get into classified areas and has come yeah. out and proven that they use that. So, um, and now this video <clears throat> shows that, which is weird. Mm-hmm. I really love that, that, um, uh, not coincidence. Cause I don't think it's a coincidence, but that, uh, I really love that fact about how the gimbal video <laughs> demonstrates like what he described as the acceleration like maneuver Mm -hmm. um and as you're watching it the it it, so it puts its belly in the direction that it wants to go because that's apparently where the gravity wave emitters are because he says it manipulates gravity and that's how it travels so as you're watching the video it's it's doing like you said it's flying you know like with its belly forward and then as it begins to decelerate that like exactly corresponds to how much it changes its tilt and then when it's like decelerates to you know like decelerates significantly like you kind of stop seeing parallax at that point it's like it tilts the other way so it's like now it's um creating a gravitational pull in the other direction to slow it down to a stop Mm -hmm. basically it's it's yeah just point for point exactly what bob lazar described and i love that because bob lazar has always been one of the ones i've hung on to where i'm like i like everyone else can be full of shit that guy's telling the truth not that he's perfect about it but that like he's talking about something real and i like seeing that corroborated yeah he just strikes me as very genuine you know Mm -hmm. like uh, uh something about him just doesn't feel like he has an ulterior motive Mm mm-hmm yeah you know totally. it also just seems like he seems like one of those guys like maybe something was put in front of him that wasn't real right you know yeah. that, that's definitely something that could our government would do maybe they walked him past totally. a window with fake things in front of it to in case he ever decided to get out there and spill mm-hmm. what what was going on there you know that yeah. that was definitely something that would you know if i was trying to muddy the water on yeah somebody you know spilling the beans on a, a classified program or something that's what yeah. i would do but it seems like nowadays like he more so thinks that that was the case at least in terms of the like the like alien being that he thought he saw and like information in in the um the briefings and whatnot like he I think he went from being of the opinion that he was being shown all real stuff to being of the opinion that he was being shown a lot of BS so as to, yeah, muddy the waters about the work he was doing on on the propulsion system. Like, I think he does think that is the case. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. 
Um, is Bob Lazar the one who? Because um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I didn't watch a documentary on him. Because I watched one where it was like a guy filming his house, and there was like little green guys poking their heads in. Oh no, that's that. Jeez, oh, what was that guy's name? Stan something. Oh yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that guy's a major dillweed. It was uh, on Netflix. <clears throat> yeah, there was like his stuff was already weird. It's like he's getting like robo voice phone calls from like aliens and whatnot it was it was already like really weird but like man as as like a teenager you like really wanted to believe the videos he had of like ufos and and little little aliens like creeping around his house and stuff but uh then like the thing (laughs) even after i was holding on a little bit like i don't know about these phone calls maybe he's being you know like pranked by the government or something but maybe the other stuff's real. After holding on for a while, the thing that did it in for me was someone caught him just like doing the most childish, stupid thing ever. He's on a like a video interview like this, like on a video call. And uh <laughs> and like there's this little like uh darting motion that enters the corner of the camera. And when you frame by frame it, you can see that it's his hand flicking a pen like he throws a pen over his shoulder he thinks he's doing it out of camera but he throws a pen over his shoulder and it it hits the bookshelf behind him and like clinks a mug or something and he's like what what was that it's like i tell you man (laughs) high high strangeness when you know it's it's just a phenomenon just weird stuff happens that's kind of just unexplainable when (laughs) when you're connected to these things and it's like oh my gosh like you piece of shit (laughs) been taken can you find that video is that like on youtube it probably is i can't remember the guy's name um we should watch that right now because that is worth (laughs) guys a real massive asshole stan alien romanek stan romanek thank you stan romanek video pin high strangeness i hate the term high strangeness it's like the only times i've ever seen it used are when someone is trying to give a name to or give an excuse to think that everything is supernatural like there's this documentary i was watching where these people were like ufo watching in australia and like freaking like there's a, a a metal trash can behind them they're like out in a public park or something and something goes Kung! in the metal trash can it's like some raccoons probably in there like making noise and they go what the <clears throat> there was nothing out here and they run over to the trash can there's nothing nothing could have made that noise high strangeness it's like what the... high strangeness is like the biggest bullcrap catch-all term i've ever heard it really just is a way for for them to attribute anything that they're too lazy or stupid to consider as an unrelated external circumstance like a way to relate it to what they're claiming is their supernatural experience it's bullshit everyone who swears by this high strangeness concept is either stupid or full of shit usually Whoa. both Stan Stan Romanek is also a sex offender. <laughs> hey, of course. Wow, <laughs> wow! Alien abductee goes to jail. <laughs> God, this guy. I I can't find the specific video of the video yeah, interview. I, I couldn't find it either. Sick. So the other videos in that lineup, the the first one, the Tic Tac UFO. Uh, one of the biggest like. Okay, first of all, we should talk about what um, what reliability we can assign to these videos because one of the first things and one of the most commonly said things about them is people going like, ah, oh, well, you know, like we don't have any any other external data. All we all we have is you know this pilot uh, saying that you know what we're seeing in this image is this or that. So we just have what they think about it and we have what we're seeing on the camera. And it's like, no, like I know the world is that simple to you, but the world is not that simple. And in each of these cases, there was an intersection of 
like visual confirmation, FLIR, which is the infrared um, setup, and uh, and usually I think radar accompanied. So it was like a, a tr- an intersection, a three-way intersection of data points all confirming there's this body at this distance moving this speed you know like those elements of it are real it's not some misperception about how fast it was going it's not some you know but but people want to want to be like oh well you know we're just going to take their word for it they didn't know what they were seeing it's like i'm sorry they were using complicated instrumentation and laying eyes on it and i think that if if they say that this is what the instruments told them I think you should be willing to suspend your disbelief a little bit and be like, okay, I don't think this guy's just a goddamn fool. And he maybe, maybe is trained enough in that sphere to have made a determination about whether or not this was an illusion. Because if it was, and you don't know that, that can cause you to, I don't know, fire on the wrong target or what, you know, like mistakes like that are not so easily made where there's like an intersection of, of detection and you have like people who were trained observers under high stress situations and stuff. I just don't buy it trying to discredit it on, on the basis like, well, all we're seeing is it's like we're seeing and we're hearing what the people who were there said. And I think that's very important. So I just want to knock yeah. that out of the way. I feel like <clears throat> for me, None of these videos confirm that these are alien vehicles. Mm -hmm. They do confirm that they're vehicles that we don't know what they are. Right. Right. So they're just very interesting to me. Um, I think that they're cool to look at. I think that they could be alien vehicles. Right. (laughs) But, you know, for me, they are more likely to be uh like another government government maybe our government does know what they are um sure. you know so totally yeah yeah in no way does it like is that proof to me that that that's an alien vehicle right agreed but um so with the tic tac one the one of the like biggest um or most widely accepted like debunkings of the idea that we're seeing what we're seeing uh, I can't remember the dude's name, but he, you know, analyzed the, the, the data readout, like on the perimeter of the screen. And he noticed, you know, that when, cause the story is that at the very end where it moves outside of like the target lock, it's because the thing sped up, like it accelerated to a degree that the, the locking mechanism was not able to, uh, keep track of it. Um, or in other words, that while it looks static, it and the, the observing vehicle and mechanism are also moving really, really fast. And then it accelerates so fast above that point that it's like, it just totally broke from lock. That's the story. Um, and this guy, you know, you can see it zooming in and zooming out. And there's a little readout that says like one X, two X, like tells you to what extent it's zooming the image mechanically um or optically or whatever and it it breaks lock just like a moment after it zooms in by two times i think and the guy's like oh see no it wasn't accelerating super quickly it just it lost track on on the the zoom um And I think that's silly because if it was any like normal rate of acceleration, like after, like if it shifted and broke lock for a second, it would immediately grab it again, like no trouble whatsoever. But the mechanism obviously had trouble grabbing it. So I think it is more likely that what the people who were there say, like that it accelerated out of, out of target lock. I think that's way more likely. Which, which video is it where they seem to go from air to water? Um, I, I've seen one, and I think this is what you're talking about, uh, where it's like, I can't remember. It it might also be FLIR. I don't really remember, but it's a much less satisfying image. It's just like a little dot on the horizon. 
and it goes from being there to kind of like disappearing. And then when it disappears, you hear the, the guy say splash, splash. And he's saying it went down into the water. And I'm not sure if he had eyes on it and he was saying he saw it go down into the water or if he was saying based on it disappearing, he thought it dropped into the water. Like in, I don't know if he was just looking at the FLIR image or what, but that one is, it's claimed that that one went down into the water, but I don't know if we have any corroboration of that specific video. Cause I've also seen or heard podcasts where they're talking about that, where military personnel are saying the same thing where they're like, yeah, they go into the water and pop up in locations and they travel just as quick underwater as they yeah. are in the air. Right. Like it's no different whether it's in water or air. Totally. And they're popping up elsewhere. Um, and then that jellyfish video that's more recent yeah. than all of these, right? That's supposed to have gone over to water, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Corbell says that people like, like, you know, he got this video from like sources. Um, he says that his sources have communicated to him that later in the same recording, it does go into the water and then stays there for 17 minutes before it reappears. Um, now one of the guys that was there like watching it, like he was, you know, this, I think this is like a, a balloon was like recording this image. Um, one of the guys that was like there behind the behind the screen um, at the time, he says that he did not. He says they tracked it until it like left the secured area around the base, but he says that he did not see it go into water or anything like that. But who knows? Maybe there were multiple recordings of the thing, and or maybe Jeremy Corbell's sources are full of crap. Hmm. Hard to know, but I, I, yeah, there are enough eyewitness testimonies of these things going into water that I do think that is a real phenomenon. But the splash video, I don't know. Who knows? Okay. Um, last one is the go fast video. And all we're seeing there is, is something moving perfectly linearly. Um, at a regular rate and seemingly going very fast and the attempted dismissals of that are like well there's nothing for scale we don't know how close or how far it is so we don't know how big it is and we don't know how fast it's going and it's like i kind of doubt it was a, a bug or a bird flying you know closer to the camera than we think but flying at a perfectly regular rate without flapping its wings and like in a perfectly straight line, like it just, it makes <clears throat> more sense that it is something weird. And I think it is further away and moving faster. Like the people who were there locking onto it and recording it say that it was. Yeah. It was a seagull. Just, it was just absolutely just super high. And then just a dive bomb. Just a dive bomb. And then bomb. right when they caught it, and then it, it just was it just leveled out and was just soaring, and that's when they caught it. Like, what the hell is that? See, I would be equally as interested in that. Like, it's just like a peregrine falcon that's just like <laughs> yeah, a day yeah. of the day, boys. <laughs> <laughs> just woke up that day and it's like, I'm gonna do 280 today, and just, <laughs> just, you know, decided to break the sound barrier of oh man of falcons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <sighs> and that would be right. interesting. Well, I think I think yeah, no matter what, that would what, be just as interesting to me. Yeah. if if there was just a bird that we we just witnessed the world's fastest, you know, the peregrine falcons all already the world's, but yeah. like that's that's the fastest of the fastest birds yeah. going for know? the the airspeed record. Yeah, yeah I, I I think the the fact is that we are seeing something odd in all three of these videos and it's not you know it's not as easy to shoo away as people would like it to be it might not be what it's being purported to be but it is odd and does deserve investigation that much is pretty obvious yeah all right guys sick well, guys that's fun yeah i think i believe in those videos i think they're real hell yeah we're making progress <laughs> cool 
Awesome. Well, uh, you're, you're getting, so I, getting through to me. I, I I think we will wrap up this round of aliens and, you know, we'll probably obviously talk about it again some other time, but probably not next week. Um, so yeah, thanks guys for doing yeah, this. I'm excited about this next guest that you're talking about. Yeah. I'm hoping that pans out schedule wise and everything. Awesome. All right, boys. Well, thanks boys. All right guys. Yep. Catch you next time. See you next time.